Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 70 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And I wish I was the heir to uh, Starbucks because I'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Slytherin. No. Um, okay. Um, this episode is sponsored by Kimberly Valley Vale. All of those. Which one? Valley. Valley. I don't know. And I'm sorry, but we'll try them all. Maybe we got one of them in there. And, and if we didn't, you. let us know. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for sponsoring this episode. Hooray. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so today we will be discussing chapter three of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I like how it doesn't even say G-O-F. It just says Harry Potter. I know. It threw me off a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Typically, they do have it. I don't like that, but whatever. Anyways, the chapter is called The Invitation. So make sure that you have read this chapter and you're ready to dive into the details. And before we begin... Sarah also has her hand up, but there's weekly profit stuff too. So Sarah, I guess. Um, so everyone knows that I don't know how to read. So my question is, is this invitation an invitation to Hogwarts or no? Is that what this is about? What? That's what I want. <laughs> an invitation to Hogwarts. That's all. Oh. I want my letter. Okay. Well, that's never forget. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Weekly profit. <laughs> all right. So, <clears throat> um, I am worried that I may have done this already, but I can't remember. But there is a Harry Potter takeover at the Singapore airport. Did I, I talk about have. this with you guys? No, I okay. I, I don't recognize this well, at all. If I did, it's super exciting and we're going to talk about it again. So the Singapore airport, um, it's like known as one of like the world's best airports. And they're doing this like... T- they're doing this like re-theming where it's going to be like all Harry Potter. Like there's going to be shops and it, they're like, they're going all out. It's pretty, it looks pretty awesome. They're basically turning part of the, part of one of the terminals into Hogsmeade village. So there's going to be Honeydukes, Madame Puttyfoot's tea shop, Zonko's. You can go down Diagon Alley and search for brooms, books, and other magical items. Terminal two they're going to have a massive Whomping Willow. In Terminal 1, they're going to have Newt Scamander's Menagerie, and you can find magical creatures there. Like, it's not just one terminal. It's, like, all throughout the entire airport. So this is pretty sweet. Why, why are they doing this? Like, I love it, I but, like, why? I don't know. <laughs> can I just I, go there without a plane ticket? <laughs> probably. <laughs> but or like buy have a to ticket go pretty and just far like to get wander. there. <laughs> Um, but then they're also going to have, like, um, they have this thing where you can, like, sit on a broom and try and, like, throw a quaffle through the hoops. It's like they have games and stuff going on. Nice. I want all airports to have stuff like this because I get yeah. so bored sitting Airports there waiting for my flight. Stink. This airport is, like, known for its amenities, though. So I think that this is just kind of, like, to bring interest, again, to the airport, like, get people to come there. Like, they're they're <laughs> known for their like in crazy nice lounges and like they have a butterfly garden like it's just over what? the top it's just like an over the top airport so i think that I'm just like here there's for no the butterflies, <laughs> <laughs> the butterflies. Like, like there's no reason for it. it i think it's because yeah. they're doing it for the holidays maybe but yeah i guess harry like, potter makes you think of like the holidays i had a discussion about that with my cousin yeah. he's like i don't understand it's not it's not christmas and i go I'm like, they have Christmas it's changes Christmas. again, maybe for like it's five Halloween. minutes. It's Halloween. I was like, oh my God. Whatever. It's everything. Slow you It's every roll. holiday. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel more Christmassy than Halloween y. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. I, I don't know why. That. Same. I think because there's a lot of scenes with like mm-hmm. snow in them. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do see Christmas. I just, I don't know. It makes me feel Christmassy inside. Yeah. Fuzzy. Yeah. I do enjoy like the socks I'm wearing. (laughs) (laughs) Tis all, ma'am. That's it. All all right. Go to Singapore. Enjoy your time. And look at me, Katie. Okay. It's time. I'm looking right at you. For the recap. (laughs) 
All right, so last time, Harry woke up from a pretty scary dream. Or was it a vision? Tiffany, looking at you. Is Connor a seer? He's a seer. Uh, and he wakes up with a scar burning. So it was something with Voldemort and Wormtail. And surprise, they're plotting to murder him. Mm. Who would have guessed that? Mm. Um, and he needs someone to talk to and decides to write to his godfather, Sirius. Nice. Seriously? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tiffany's over our serious jokes. Will I'm they not, end? I'm still not. After no. he has gone well, through the veil. <laughs> maybe at the end of Order of the Phoenix, they'll end. <laughs> okay. For, well, it'll for seriously serious. never end. He's never going to give you up. Never They're going to let, let you down. down. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Rick. Can I have a summary? All right. So... I have a serious question to ask you guys. What's yeah. more depressing than a normal breakfast with the Dursleys? An abnormal one. <laughs> I'm going to say breakfast with the Dursleys on a diet. Hey! <laughs> which is what's happening, sadly. Sadly for all of them, not so much Harry. Uh, because he has snacks hidden in his room. Snacks! Snacks! snacks. snacks. I really want a snack. So, a well-stamped letter has arrived from a wonderful mother. <laughs> well-stamped letter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Harry pulls the serious card to get Vernon to agree to let him uh, leave. I mean, and I'm pretty sure that Vernon's like, get out anyways. So <laughs> his day went from scar hurting to he gets to leave these muggles the next day. I say that's a pretty good day. Oh, man. I agree. I got some reason. And he has cake. And I am not prepared. I like cake. <laughs> I like turtles. I like cake. I, like I like jokes. <laughs> I like turtles. Oh, really? <laughs> I like the girl that's like, I smell really like beef. Beef. It's All right. My favorite what does uh, Elf say? You smell like beef and cheese. You don't smell anything like Santa. I'm <laughs> <laughs> throwing flies. Dude, I need to watch that. Such a good movie. Oh, maybe we can put it Francisco. on at the uh, Swishmas party. Swishmas. Okay. It's not happening anymore. <gasps> okay, here we go. Harry arrives in the kitchen for a lovely breakfast with the three Dursleys. And they were all seated around the table. No one acknowledges a... Oh, that was hard to say. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> it's probably because you're sitting next to me that you find it, it difficult to read. It is. <laughs> no one acknowledges him as he comes into the room. Uncle Vernon's large red... Oh, oh, great. oh, oh. Face was behind the morning paper, which was called the Daily Mail. And... I discovered that that is a real paper. Correct. So she didn't make it up. <laughs> and she's still around. Very cool. <laughs> well, you never know what she'll like create and make her own. But she right. no, she's like, nope, this is the real deal. Which is why the wizarding world is real to us. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just real in general. I mean, for real. On the for real, for real. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I'm serious. It's real. <laughs> Get out. I almost said that. <laughs> So, are you guys ready to hear about the um, scrumptious uh, breakfast layout for them today? I'm How so ready. I'm seriously ready, <laughs> Tiffany. Wait till I see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Hold on to your hats, folks, because it's a quarter of grapefruit for each person. <laughs> that is not healthy. P.S. School nurse. <clears throat> no. No. Go ahead, Sarah. Well, and then you find out that Dudley gets more than Harry, so really it's on a quarter. Yeah, she cut it that way on purpose. Fractions, my friend. I've seen you with the knife. Petunia. Harry gets like a six. Yeah, and we'll get to it. Never mind. I almost jumped ahead (laughs) of the chapter. Um, Dudley was sulking and furious, and he was taking up more space than usual, which is kind of crazy, seeing as how he's supposed to be on a diet. Mm -hmm. But she also said that he took up a whole entire side of the table. Dudley. That's crazy. What happened? And you, you know she's not talking about the short side if it's like a long table. Oh, okay. you know? oh like a rectangle? Yeah. Yeah. Sad. So Petunia, being the mother that she is, was really hamming it up for Dudley, trying to make the best of the situation. She was like, there you are, Diddy darling. <laughs> and D- Dudley had um, been placed on this diet because of his poor end of the year report. Is anybody shocked? No. I'd be calling her every day if I was his teacher. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think he got any phone calls or is it just the one report? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they called and they got yelled at so they didn't try to call again. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although they seem like the types to like have to be like looking good in everyone's eyes. Or do you think that they were like the ones well, that make the teachers afraid? Maybe because they do are they are trying to get him to lose weight because, you know, he mm-hmm. got a bad report. So they maybe maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um Petunia said that the teachers don't understand him, and Uncle Vernon maintained that he, quote, didn't want some swatty little Nancy boy, Nancy boy, boy for a son anyway. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Friday nights, I'm done. Yep. yep. <laughs> but I said, okay. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what is that even supposed to mean? Well, I think that's just a little bit of a sexist comment. Well, yeah. of course it is. But like that's what he he thinks that men should be big and tough and bullying. Burly. Yeah. And he cuz he's bullying and he thinks Correct. he's a man's man. Well, guess what? You ain't no man. You're you're a man, but you ain't no man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um so but they pretty much ignore the bullying part of the report, which really big like angers me. And Petunia's yep. like, he's a boisterous little boy, but he wouldn't hurt a fly. Really? Mm. He punches your nephew no. constantly. Yeah. He's just going to pick on 10-year-olds in two years. Is this we- one deserved it. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, you that's did right. that really well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I have a read from chapter that I have to, to find. But um, at the bottom of the report, there were a few um, well-chosen comments from the school nurse, and there was no way that the Dursleys could get around that one, which really was interesting to me because they are not realizing, which she probably knows, but you know she wants to give in to her son all the time and whatever he wants. But it's to the point where he's... You can't ignore it anymore. Did yes, ma'am. Did your from chapter start where I started underlining things? Yes, it does. Oh, oh. We're like best friends. We really are. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to read. And it says, no matter how much Aunt Petunia wailed that Dudley was big boned and that his poundage was really puppy fat okay. and that he was a growing <laughs> boy who needed plenty of food or the fact, re- the fact remained that the school outfitters didn't stock knickerbockers big enough for him anymore. The school nurse had seen what Aunt Petunia's eye. Wait, I was right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. School nurse had seen what Aunt Petunia's eyes show so sharp when it came to spotting fingerprints on her gleaming walls and in observing the comings and goings of the neighbors. Simply refused to see that far from needing extra nourishment, Dudley had reached roughly the size and weight of a young killer whale. Did you look up the, the size and weight? I, I can up. see it. I see KG written in there. I looked up. How much a killer I should have done this, and I'm really mad at myself. You stinking Ravenclaw. Well, you know, because I wanted to know. So, in kilograms, it's a average is 180 kilograms, which equates to 400 pounds. Do you think he was really 400 pounds, though? I I I wouldn't be shocked if she's saying he's the size of a small killer whale. Is he tall? That's regardless. No, but I'm just saying, like. Is he no, like I really tall and really big? Even if or, he's like six foot tall, four hundred pounds. Yes, I I understand that. I'm just asking. I, I have no idea if okay. she tells us how tall. Do y'all he know is. how tall Dudley is? Um, I don't think they're particularly tall. Like I don't think um, probably Arden is particularly tall. And no. I know that he's supposed to be like his body shape is very much modeled after Vernon. Mm-hmm. Well, the so. and at least in America, the last I heard, the the average size of a man, like t- tall wise, is five foot seven inches. Huh? Yeah. That's short, says the shortest one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so men, or maybe it's 5'9. It might be 5'9. 5'7 five seven seems. That's my, how tall I am. But I'm above average for a woman. Isn't I it believe five the five? average is, yes, for women, I believe it's 5'5. Five five. Wow. So it's I'm either 5'7 or 5'9 five for men. Um, but yes, my family, male wise, at least the O'Malley's are um, above average because they're over 6'2. Six. Six yeah. Is Matt 6'3? They're all around like 6'2, six 6'3. Six hmm. Both him and my dad. I know Matt's tall. Both him and my dads. <laughs> you, got, you got two dads. <laughs> both my father and both my brothers. There it is. In there. Six, all right. 6'2, six 6'3. Six now that we're done talking about Four, men's heights in the US, <laughs> 400 pounds. <laughs> I, I guess. That's I mean, 200 pounds. 
If she's not exaggerating be- about the table and all that jazz, probably. Yeah. Yeah. 400 pounds. Okay. That's crazy. That's all a right. lot. That's a lot of days. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to ding 400 times, Katie. We'll wait. Okay. We'll be here <laughs> <laughs> One hour later. Oh, ah! went out for that guy. Yes, oh, the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. Poor, poor it out, guys. I yeah, love that, that show. So good. I mm. need it. <laughs> I, I watched that, that episode that night. I know. I, I was saying that when I was buying a Puffs sweatshirt at the Puffs play, I was like, <laughs> I was literally standing next to Megan. I'm like, I don't need it. Again, I'm not a Hufflepuff, but I love the play. Yeah. I was like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Especially, like, I don't need another sweatshirt in my life. Really, though? Yeah, you do. And then I was like, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, it's so comfortable. I also was a really bad influence in that decision, though. I'm like, of course you need it. I, yeah, you do. Like, it's going to be so comfy wearing it on the drive home. Just think about it. <laughs> you, Megan, you are that way. You're like, yeah, you just totally need it. Except with Katie's Christmas present. get it. I mean, I... <laughs> Well, actually, she changed her mind now, so I have to return the one that I got and get a different one. Oh, do you want Evie now? You are getting Evie? Yeah, I went with the Evie. Oh. I just want to tell you that I match my Pikachu now in outfits, so. Just People saying. are going to hate this part of the song. Yeah, so I'm cute. sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go to Harry Potter. But Puffs uh, is Harry Potter. Go see it if you have it. It's a great play. Yes. Okay. It's yes. also now on Amazon. So. Third or nothing. Okay, go ahead. Knickerbockers, right? I was like, ooh, Knickerbocker Glory from Sorcerer's Stone. Isn't there also a Barney song? Like Knickerbocker Bocker sitting something? No? Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. I was not a Barney person. <laughs> you just showed your age real bad. Knickerbocker Bocker. guys and ladies. All right. I don't know. I watched Barney and I don't remember that. Same. <laughs> Did you really? Oh, that stinks. <laughs> All right. Um, Knickerbockers are a form of men's or boys' baggy need trousers. Is there a picture? Yes. Okay. From 1912, if you use the <laughs> Wikipedia. But it also made me think of Knickerbocker Glory, which we found out was a layered ice cream sundae served in a large, tall glass with a long spoon. See? What'd Mr. Knickerbocker. Say? I knew there was a song. There is a song by Barney. But I just wondered, like, why are they called almost the same thing? Yeah, I don't know. I wonder that, too. I don't know. Nobody has any ideas? I wonder if they're no, named. No, it's weird. <laughs> it is. I, I thought. I guess so. the ice cream would be maybe named after the um, pants. I don't know. I don't Guys, even, you know. No, I just thought that was interesting that they're kind of, I mean, obviously, Knickerbuckers and then Knickerbucker Glory. <laughs> I just didn't know why. Maybe they I mean, like, decided. You, sorry, Katie, go ahead. Would you eat something called like a hot fudge trouser? No. Yeah. I, I, would. I would if it has hot fudge. <laughs> I mean, it has hot fudge on it. Of course I would. Yeah. But like maybe they thought that the Knickerbocker pants were so glorious, they decided to make ice cream and call it the Knickerbocker Glory. In honor of said pants. What if they were like, this ice cream's so good, it'll blow your pants off. <laughs> blow oh, your pants off like God. a baggie in the knees. <laughs> I don't know. Whoa. Uh, that could have been bad. <laughs> so, thoughts to think, friends. Okay. Um. So, now there was a battle. A battle of the pudge in the house. And a new regime had begun. There was a diet sheet that was sent home and taped to the fridge, which, why are you using tape, Petunia? Why not a magnet? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to scuff up your beautiful she's, fridge. She's not the smartest. Just saying. <laughs> I just really would not pick her for putting tape on the fridge. I don't know. This Maybe she thinks magnets are like tacky or something. I could mm. see her thinking that. I agree. Maybe. I don't know. Um, And so... The fridge was emptied of all the fun and unhealthy things like fizzy drinks, cakes, and now there was fruit and vegetables that are fondly referred to as rabbit food. (laughs) No one laughs. Uh, (laughs) I call lettuce rabbit food. Lettuce is delicious. Just kidding. It can can hurt you right now. Let us take a moment. Don't romaine calm, guys. Don't eat the romaine. I was going to say lettuce. No, not right now. Don't. All right, Remain calm and lettuce. don't eat it. Seriously, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, don't. <laughs> oh, I didn't even mean Seriously, it that way. Me. 
So to make Dudley feel better about his new lifestyle, Aunt Petunia insisted that the whole family follow his new diet. Harry, of course, got a smaller grapefruit, uh, I was going to say square, they're not square, (laughs) piece than Dudley did, and I wrote lame. But here's the thing. Petunia, you don't need to be on this diet. Harry, you need more food. Yeah. Vernon, you could use it. Yeah. But that, but like... I don't know. This diet annoys me because grapefruit alone is not a breakfast. No, that is not a balanced breakfast. No. Mm-hmm. You're actually like doing yourself more harm. The the thing is you actually have to eat more to lose weight, but you have to eat the correct things. Preach it, Katie. Fruits and veggies. Under calories. Who was your health coach? <laughs> um, somebody really cool. Oh. Are you looking at her right now? <laughs> I am. Oh, <laughs> so as soon as Harry found out that he was going to have to survive on carrot sticks, he sent letters to everyone requesting food. And I said, this poor kid can never eat properly except mm-hmm. for at Hogwarts. Mm-hmm. He has probably Honestly. never eaten properly at number four pervert drive ever. Number no. four. Oh, oh I'm, that was a bad bell. Um, so... All of his loved ones sent him something to eat. Hermione sent a large box of sugar-free sweets because her parents are dentists. Hagrid gave him homemade rock cakes, which we know um, those might break your teeth. (laughs) Mrs. Weasley, which was probably his best bet at getting something good, Mm. sent fruit cake and meat pies. And so I had to look up meat pie because... Mrs. Lovett. Yeah, that's the only (laughs) worst pies in London. A meat pie is a pie filled with meat. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that. And other savory ingredients. Did I put what I wanted to put here? Did I put friends reference? It's beef sauteed with peas and onions. (laughs) A layer of lady fingers. (laughs) Some jam. <laughs> so for all you friends lovers out there, that's what I thought of. And Joey's like, what's not like this? He's like, meat, good. <laughs> jam, good. good. <laughs> oh, Peas, <me>. good. <laughs> so, yes, you're welcome for that. But yeah, meat pie is a pie of meat. So. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have guessed. Also, how are these things staying okay under the floorboards? Lane Kim style. <laughs> Gilmore Girls reference. Well, if it's Boom, fruit cake, maybe. I think that could stay. What about meat pie? He probably ate those first. I don't Hold know. Hold on. Magic. Maybe Mrs. Weasley put a preserving charm on them. That's true. She okay. could have. I need to headcanon that because otherwise it's gross. That is gross. 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 Well, also, like, how long was he even home? Like, a month? Not very long. Yeah. yeah. This so, was like, his shortest stay. All right, so um, Errol delivered the ones from the Weasley house, and he needed a full five Mm -hmm. days. Oh, nice double to recover. (laughs) And here's the thing, guys. I need the Weasleys to stop using this owl because he needs to retire. (laughs) It makes me sad. Five days. I know. They can't afford a new owl. They have what's Hermes. Borrow him. That's Percy's owl. And Percy, Percy you as know we know, know, is a stuck up mm, in this book. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, he's not very Went nice there. right now. He's got to get that me, report to so Mr. Crouch on Cauldron Bottoms, okay? Yeah. You can't be lending Hermes out to people. Did I get Frosty? It's not Frosty. So, he also got four <laughs> giant birthday cakes. They came to the rescue. (laughs) So, luckily, Harry had two birthday cakes left at this time, and he was looking forward to eating them when he got back upstairs. And he had a little bit of, um, you know, some sass going on. But I did want to read this last little bit from the chapter, because Uncle Vernon is in some fine form. Uncle Vernon laid aside his paper with a deep sniff of disapproval and looked down at his own grapefruit quarter. Is this it? He said <laughs> grumpily to Aunt Petunia. Aunt Petunia gave him a severe look and nodded pointedly at Dudley, who had already finished his own grapefruit quarter and was eyeing Harry's with a very sour look in his piggy little eyes. <laughs> Uncle Vernon gave a great sigh, <sighs> which ruffled his large bushy mustache, and he picked up his spoon. 
<laughs> I literally wrote oink oink next to piggy little eyes. Piggy little eyes. Hmm. First All right. he's a pig now, or no, first he's a whale, now he's a pig. Yep. He was a pig, you know, back in the day, too. Yeah. With yeah, a tail. Yeah, he even had a tail. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this tail. <laughs> Thus ends the red. All right. Wow, we've got some exciting things here. Because the doorbell rings, and the Dursleys are not expecting anybody. So, <laughs> Vernon, what? No, I just, you're you like, they're not expecting anybody. No one was saying I got that. <laughs> <laughs> so Vernon goes to answer it. Um, and then as soon as Aunt Petunia wasn't looking, Dudley stole the rest of Uncle Vernon's grapefruit, which makes me laugh. At least he got a hold of Vernon's and not Harry's, you know? True. So there's that well, going of course, for him. Because Vernon's would be bigger than Harry's, so he's not going to go for Harry's first. Truth. Truth. I'm surprised um, so Petunia he- wasn't like, here, have mine, ditters. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Harry hears talking at the door and then laughing and then Vernon answering curtly. So he comes back and barks at Harry to go to the living room uh, now. So Harry wonders what on earth he was supposed to have done this time. And so I've been listening to these chapters because I like to, I, I just love Jim Dale. I've said that a lot of times, but his Vernon voice <laughs> is the best. Give it to me. What does I, it sound like? <laughs> so it's like <laughs> Vernon goes so says Vernon so <laughs> 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 and uh, Harry has like in his mind he's like oh, I just really want to answer with so what <laughs> but he doesn't he holds Ugh. his tongue Um. so apparently Vernon received a letter about Harry but who on earth would send a letter about Harry through a postman? Who'd be writing to you? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to read the letter. It says, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Dursley, we have never been introduced, and but I am sure you've heard a great deal from Harry about my son, Ron. It makes me sad that, like, Harry doesn't really have an opportunity to, like, talk Mm -hmm. about his friends to them because Mm -hmm. they don't care. So, Mm -hmm. like, that's never happened, even though, like, Molly would assume that it does. Right, because that would be a normal thing. Right. Um, As Harry might have told you, the (laughs) final— Again, yeah, right. (laughs) The final of the Quidditch World Cup takes place this Monday night, and my husband, Arthur, has just managed to get prime tickets through his connections at the Department of Magical Games and Sports. I do hope you will allow us to take Harry to the match, as this really is a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Britain hasn't hosted the Cup for 30 years, and tickets are extremely hard to come by. We would, of course, be glad to have Harry stay for the remainder of the summer holidays and to see him safely onto the train back to school. It would be best for Harry to send us your answer as quickly as possible in the normal way, because the Muggle Postman has never delivered to our house, and I'm not sure he even knows where it is. Hoping to see Harry soon. Yours sincerely, Molly Weasley. P.S. I do hope we've put enough stamps on it. <laughs> How many stamps do you think were on that? So I I pulled up the... So that's actually the illustration of this chapter. Like, this right. is the chapter art. Yeah. Is the stamp. And if we go off of that, there are... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27... And that's just on the front. 28. 28 stamps. So, is it all the sides? Both sides, I guess. <laughs> There's only two I, sides. I would assume it's just on the front. <laughs> oh, Okay. That's a lot of stamps. Oh, yeah. Sh- yeah. Shut it, Katie. It's a 3D envelope. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> I told you Friday um, nights you cannot count on me to be smart. <laughs> so I thought since this is, I think that this is the first time in this book that the Quidditch World Cup is mentioned, correct? Mm. No, so it was mentioned I've, the year before, I think, not, when they were In this book, about, she said. Oh, in this book. Mm, yeah. In this book. So I wanted to do, I found this article on Pottermore that talks about the history of the Quidditch World Cup, since the letter mentions that Britain hasn't hosted it for 30 years. So where's it been? There's some cool, there's, it's by, there's writing by JK Rowling on Pottermore about the Quidditch World Cup. Um, So 
it says here that, sorry guys, it's every four years, just like the Olympics. Nice. So I thought that was cool. Um, and there, she listed the most infamous Quidditch World Cups, which I thought this would be kind of cool to talk about. So there was the Attack of the Killer Forest. And this was the ghastly climax of the 1809 final between Romania and New Spain, what is now known as Mexico. Oh. I thought that was cool. It has gone down in wizarding history as the worst exhibition of temper ever given by an individual player. So Nico Nenad's teammates had become so concerned by his ferocious outbursts during the quarter and semifinals that they tried to persuade their manager to substitute him for the final, advice that was sadly ignored by the ambitious old wizard. So after the game, his teammate told an international inquiry over the preceding weeks we'd seen him beat himself over the head with his broom and set fire to his own feet in frustration i'd personally stopped him strangling two referees however i had no suspicion about what he was planning to do if the final didn't go our way i mean who'd suspect that he'd have to be as mental as he was Um, precisely when and how he managed to jinx an entire forest on the edge of the West Siberian plain is open to speculation. Although he is thought to have had accomplices among unprincipled fans and was later proven to have paid local dark wizards substantial sums. After two hours of play, Romania were behind on points and looking tired. It was then that he deliberately hit a bludger out of the stadium into the forest beyond the pitch. And the effect was instantaneous and murderous. The trees sprang to life wrenched their roots out of the ground and marched upon the stadium, flattening everything in their path, causing numerous injuries and several fatalities. Nice. What had been a Quidditch match turned swiftly into a human versus tree battle, which the Wizards won only after seven hours of hard fighting. Nanad has not was not prosecuted as he had been killed early on by a particularly violent spruce. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if his name was Bruce. Okay. What? <laughs> There's a spruce in um, Tower City. I don't think it's there anymore. Called Bruce the Spruce. Who talks to you? Oh, I remember that. Yeah. What? I do not remember that. That is odd. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, gosh. So on this list is actually this final, this World Cup final. So the Ireland Bulgaria match of 1994. Uh, it took place in Dartmoor, England, and it is known because of the reappearance of the Dark Mark, which we will obviously talk about more in a couple of chapters. I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> but then also, I thought this was super cool because she gave us like a history of World Cups and like who had won all the way from, well, from 1990 up until like current day night. Uh, which would be 2014, actually, was the last one. I guess this year, actually, there would have been one, but she didn't update the article. Whoa, so you said that lives. with a little bit of shade. Well, she should update <laughs> it. She didn't update the article. <laughs> Just saying, hey, dear Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in 1998, that's the next one. So this is after the war, if mm. you think about it. I'm surprised uh, so, they had one. Yeah. yeah. But I guess so, it would boost spirits, right? It was what? It would boost spirits. Oh, boost spirits. spirits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's also... Cup. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, but still, I mean... Yeah. Really I mean, but it was really only in England. Just saying. Just well, the 1998 Quidditch World Cup actually was only the second ever All-African final. It mm-hmm. was between Malawi and Senegal. And... Um, Malawi won. So there we go. By a landslide. Yep. In 2002 was the next one. And this one was between Egypt and Bulgaria. (gasps) Victor Crumb was still the seeker. So after another crushing disappointment for Bulgaria, Victor Crumb was narrowly beaten to the snitch by the outstanding Egyptian seeker, Raoya Zaglul. After the match, a tearful Crumb announced his retirement. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Crumb. 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 Um, Crumb. (laughs) 
2006, we had Burkina Faso versus France. It's apparently a very small African nation, and they ended up winning. And in 2010, we had Moldova versus China. Oh, my God. Um, Look at those points. 750 to 640. It says it was a furiously (laughs) contested match that lasted three days and was widely held to have produced some of the finest Quidditch seen this century. (laughs) The tiny country, country of Moldova has consistently produced excellent Quidditch teams and supporters were heartbroken that they failed to qualify this year due to an outbreak of dragon pox at their training camp. Meaning 2014, because that's when this article came out. Okay. Yes. What do the fans do for three days? Do you think they come like prepared to stay a while? Okay. Yeah. I would guess. Do they have like Uber Eats? (laughs) (laughs) But like think of the world, like soccer World Cup, because that's what I'm assuming she's comparing this to a little bit because soccer, well, and over there it's called football, Mm. is huge, like Mm. significantly larger than it is here. Mm. Um, And those like in the cup, like the World Cup, those games last forever, not forever, but like, you know, the disqualifying and all that stuff. And you're looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm listening. Learning things. <laughs> so like I think they know like they come prepared. They're die hard Quidditch fans. Okay. They're gonna do what they need to do. All right. They need to take some coffee, a wakey uppy spell. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh. Never sleep for three days. What the time? Caffeino Maxima. Yes. <laughs> All right. I've got you. one more. I've got one more fun fact about the Quidditch World Cup. So this is, it was the Quidditch World Cup 2014. We, she still has not told us who won. Maybe oh. it's still going on. I have no idea. <laughs> that, but I would love that. <laughs> yeah. She's like, ooh, so it forgot says to update that, this. It's still happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it says that Crum came out of retirement in 2014. Right. So uh, much interest had been generated by the return to the Bulgarian side of the previously retired Victor Crum, who at 38 is old for a seeker, but whose stated aim is to win the World Cup before I die. That Bulgarian bonbon. Bon. Um, so it says, for this reason, Bulgaria is attracting support from those whose own countries have not qualified. So a lot of people were rallying behind Crum in 2014 to win. Do you think they were going, Crum, Crum? Yes. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'm so yeah. funny. I don't know. I heard he was a crummy player. All right. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, the envelope that Mrs. Weasley had sent, every bit of it was covered in stamps except for a square inch on the front into which Mrs. Weasley had squeezed the Dursley's address in minute writing. (laughs) And Harry had to try hard not to laugh. Uh, But of course, his his sass came through and he said, well, she did put enough stamps on then. (laughs) I love him. Yeah, he's great. Uh, Vernon is like not thinking this is funny at all, though, because the postman... Asked questions, so of course they he doesn't want anybody to think that there's anything abnormal going on in his life. Um, they thought that it was funny. That's why he rang the doorbell. Uh, other people might not get why he was making such a fuss, but of course, as we and Harry know, the Dursley's worst fear was that someone would find out that they were connected, however distantly, with people like the Weasleys. Mm-hmm. So... Uncle Vernon is glaring at Harry, and Harry thinks that if he doesn't do or say anything stupid, he might be in for the treat of his life, because if you think about the options that Vernon has here, his his uh, his chances are looking pretty good that he's going to get to go to the World Cup, because Vernon can get rid of him early, he doesn't have to take him to platform nine and three quarters, and he gets him out of his life earlier. Mm-hmm. So but it's terrible. also difficult because he's going to be giving Harry something he wants. So rude. So, Katie, tell us what what happens. You know what's so rude? What? That you just took the entire first part of my sentence. Oh, did I really? <laughs> oh, I apologize. I didn't even know. No, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Harry decides to break the silence, which I think is kind of brave because... In this situation, yeah, (laughs) in this situation, I don't know, like, I would just, like, wait for him to call the shots and see how it went. But he was like, so, 
can I go then? <laughs> so there's that so he wanted to say before. And you can almost feel bad for Vernon, but not really, because you see those gears working in his brain, just like Meg said. So if he lets Harry go, that makes Harry happy, which Vernon doesn't want to do. But if he lets Harry go, that gets him out of the house two weeks earlier. And Uncle Vernon hates having Harry in the house. Why are you recording me right now? <laughs> I'm putting this on our Instagram story. <laughs> um, Don't steal so, our stories. He starts to make conversation to give himself more thinking time. So he asks who Mrs. Weasley is, or rather, who is this woman? Come on, please. Um, so Harry says, well, you've seen her. You saw her at end of term. So get ready to get angry. Because Vernon says, don't be sort of woman. And Harry thinks it was a bit rich of Uncle Vernon to call anyone dumpy when his own son, Dudley, had finally achieved what he'd been threatening to do <laughs> since the age of three and become wider than he was tall. Her jokes, man. Yes. <laughs> I just want to say what I wrote in my book when I read that. I said, whoa, don't talk about Molly like that. Yep. Honestly. Yeah. Rude. Seriously. Rude. I mean, he just thinks he's above everybody, so. He is, well. he is in height, probably. Maybe. And with. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Vernon keeps reading from the letter, and I'm shocked he even says the word Quidditch. Out yeah. loud. I mean, he can't stand the word magic, even if he just said, like, what Harry said, magic words one time, meaning please and thank you, and he freaked out. He can't hear the word Hogwarts. He can't even hear, like, the train to school. Like, all of that upsets him. And here he is asking what Quidditch is. Um, but, of course, when Harry starts to explain it, he can't bear to hear that any kind of sport would be played on broomsticks, and he quickly shuts them down. So then he asks, well, what is a response in the normal way? Like, what is that supposed to mean? And Harry's like, I'll post. It's normal for, oh, Harry, don't say it, but he says it anyway. Wizards, why? <laughs> why, <laughs> Harry, why? <laughs> um, so straight from the book, Uncle Vernon looked as outraged as if Harry had just uttered a disgusting swear word. Shaking with anger, he shot a nervous look through the window as though expecting to see some of the neighbors with their ears pressed against the glass. So he goes zero to 60. Nobody's in your house. Nobody can hear this stuff. He just freaks out instantly. But all hail Harry, because he's not standing for this anymore. Literally things gone were the days that he's going to be forced to take every single one of their stupid rules. He's not following the diet. He's not going to let Uncle Vernon stop him from going from the cup. So he says, oh, wait, I just totally skipped something, didn't I? <laughs> I did. So Vernon you starts yelling back. at him. No, oh, it's okay. Vernon started yelling at him, you know, how many times I have to tell you not to say those things, blah, blah, blah. We put clothes on your back. You're ungrateful. Oh, yeah. yep. And then Harry snaps back only after Dudley finished with them. Ooh. As he stands there in a sweatshirt or something that he has to roll like yeah. five times. That's what it says. So terrible. And jeans so baggy that his belt is holding them up for him. Yeah. It's not like they can't afford to buy the kid an outfit or two. Jeez. Right. <gasps> yeah. Do you think he has to wear his old underwear? Probably. Oh, probably. probably. Boo. Do you think he has to like tie it on the side? Probably mm -hmm. something. Gross. Yeah, that's gross. But Harry, he can ha have a stroke of brilliance every now and then. And he's like, all right, fine. I can't go. Can I leave? I have a letter to finish to Sirius. You know, <laughs> my godfather. And instantly, uh, Vernon, his purple face starts getting all blotchy, which is really gross. But the reason I wanted to point it out is because she says it made him look like badly mixed black currant ice cream. <laughs> oh, my God. When Meg and me were overseas, they have black currant everything. They legitimately did. Everything. It was everywhere. Is it great? It's delicious. It was good. Yeah. yeah it was it's good. just like, it's funny it's that like you berries. just don't see it here. Yeah. Like blueberries? Yeah. Blackberries, I think. Schnozberries. I don't know. Schnozberries taste like schnozberries. <laughs> um, so Harry says, like, of course I'm writing to him because he hasn't heard from me in a while and he might start to think that something's wrong. So again, here's Vernon struggling with himself. If he stops Harry writing to Sirius, Sirius would think Harry's being mistreated. If he tells Harry he can't go to the cup, Harry would write to Sirius and then Sirius would know that Harry was being mistreated. So there was only one thing left to do. I wouldn't have guessed this in a million years otherwise, but Vernon says, yes, fine, you can go. Yes. It's just such a brilliant Harry move. Mm -hmm. I know. It was yeah. so good. 
he's getting he's getting wise. I'm so proud you know? of him. I know. So because cool. you're supposed to respect your elders, right? Yep. But I am a strong believer in if you want respect, you need to give me respect as well. And I don't think that is any exception for children. Ooh, I like I that. I agree. I, I don't like that. Yeah, I know. Mm. So Harry bolts out of there, of course, before he can, you know, screw anything else up or before Vernon can change his mind. He has to fight the urge to jump in the air and whoop because he was going to the cup. And he almost runs into Dudley in the hall because, of course, oh, Dudley's so trying to eavesdrop. And he says, I that was this. an excellent breakfast, wasn't it? I feel really full, don't you? I love it. I love <laughs> it so much. <laughs> I just loved how you were, like, reading that because you were actually, like, even though it sounded like you were ad-libbing the chapter, you actually were reading some lines, like, direct from the chapter, and you read it just like Jim Dale does. I was going to the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> I am leaving the Desleys tomorrow. <laughs> Did I have an accent? Did that yeah. slip out? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's just, like, exactly how he reads it, and that's how you said it. It was funny. Love that's it. Can I say... I'm talented. You are. Yeah. You're amazing. <laughs> Just with your voice. Oh my <laughs> Is that my voice? My voice. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Sarah can't handle us. <laughs> can anybody name that movie? Tell us. I can. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's <Harry>. blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make a gross comment. So Harry runs upstairs, taking them three at a time. And I circled that in the book. Um, So he goes, obviously, back to his bedroom. And he sees that his lovable owl, Hedwig, is back. Um, And she's really annoyed. What else is new? Because there is a little owl flying around, a.k.a. Ron's owl. And he's in her space. Wait, is Pig a boy or a girl? Do we know that? I think it's a boy. I feel like Pig is a boy. So... Obviously, Pig is carrying a letter Pig. from Ron. So I'm going to read the short and sweet note. Harry, Dad got the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Ireland versus Bulgaria, Monday night. Mom's writing to the muggles to ask. To, sorry, they just thinks we left the call muggles a lot. Um, to ask you to stay. They might already have the letter. I don't know how fast muggle post is. Thought I'd send this with Pig anyway. So then Harry's like, oh, so that's like assuming because as of right now, we didn't know the name of the owl. Um, but obviously that's the pig's name. Ooh, the owl's name. <laughs> and <laughs> What's so, happening? I don't know. <laughs> so Harry, um, finally like kind of grabs pig to like give him a note back to write to Harry or to write to Ron. <laughs> 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 but I think he's like so excited that he like was able to do the journey, you know, like, yeah, he's, he's like, a, I'm like a real owl now. And so this is the rest <laughs> of the letter. So it says, um, we're coming for you, whether the muggles like it or not, you go, Weasleys. I enjoy that. You go. You go, Weasleys. You go, Glen Coco. <laughs> <laughs> and not for Gertrude Wieners, bye. <laughs> you can't miss the World Cup. Only mom and dad reckon it's better if we pretend to ask their permission first. If they say yes, send Pig back with your answer pronto, and we'll come to get you at 5 o'clock on Sunday. If they say no, send Pig back pronto, and we'll come and get you at 5 o'clock on Sunday anyway. <laughs> Hermione's arriving this afternoon. Percy started work at the Department of International Magical Cooperation. Don't mention anything about abroad while you're he- here unless you want the pants bored off you. See you soon. Right. Knickerbockers. I was going to say that. Oh, you stole it. <laughs> Ooh, and I literally wrote my notes. The start of his downward spiral. Ooh. Ooh. So Ooh. Harry's like, Ooh. to the bird, calm down, bro, because the little pig is just very excited. <laughs> and so um, he writes him a letter back, and it's even shorter and sweeter than Ron's note. It's, Ron, it's okay. The muggles say I can come. See you 5 o'clock tomorrow. Can't wait. Harry. Hurry. <laughs> Hurry. Hurry. Um, so then he like gives um, the note that he wrote to ooh, Sirius. He finishes. He has a postscript. Um, and if you don't know what PS means, that's postscript to it and says, uh, just to let him know that like, bro, if you need me, he's going to be staying with the Weasleys till Hogwarts. Check me out later. Bye. <laughs> Quote. <laughs> Direct quote from the book. Verbatim. You might you might have a different version, but uh This is the 2018 <laughs> version of Hot Cup of Fire. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's the real title of my book. Um see American version. 
<laughs> oh my god. No, but it's funny to like see um cuz you read in the later on the chapter how Hedwig is like reminds me of like a lady, like prim and proper like when she <laughs> sticks her little leg out so she could show owl, owl, pig. This is how you do. Like, this is how you properly, like, have a letter attached to your leg. You don't act crazy, yada, da, da, da. And, like, pig is just, like, crazy excited, like, a ball of energy. Would you say she's a quality owl? I think they're all quality owls. <laughs> you disagree? Wow. Well, I'm um, just saying. Okay. <laughs> so, um... After he gives the letters to both Pig and uh, Hedwig, they, like, do their thing and, you know, go give their letters to their peeps. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm listening to you, podcast. I just think I'm not used to you sitting so close to me. Am I intimidating you? So close to me. Um, so then he was like, you know you. what? I'm going to celebrate me leaving by having some cake. And he does. So he goes to the floorboard, he gets out some birthday cake, and he eats it in a very happy mood. And I quoted from the book he had cake and dudley had nothing but great food <laughs> it was a bright summer's day he'd be leaving the privet drive tomorrow his scar felt perfectly normal again and he was going to watch the quidditch world cup it was hard just now to feel worried about anything even lord voldemort and i was like yeah bro i feel you mm-hmm. that's a good feeling everything's coming up roses for harry Me too. and then i realized realistically this is the first book that we don't want to open with harry and it's the first time we don't see his birthday it is true yeah yeah. Sorry, my section was super short, and well, you know he just is, wrote to people. This, this is still chapter a leading was kind chapter. of short, yeah, so this chapter yeah, was crazy short. Yeah, and then I did say he does deserve some happiness, um, mm-hmm. but you know by by the end of the book, everything has changed. Everything's gone. <laughs> Everything's well. different. Everything is gonna be really sad. At the end of the book. Everything is different. Oh yeah. You don't know what the song is from. Yeah, I do. The Lego <laughs> movie. I thought you'd never seen it. I haven't, but I'm not an idiot. No. I know pop culture. Pop culture. I really don't know pop culture. Though. I'm excited to see the Weasleys. This beer. I'm excited for this next chapter. Oh, We're going to bleeding bad. the burrow. Like we are literally going oh, back to the burrow. Back to the that burrow. Is what the chapter is called? Oops, that was an accident. Here, Ding, buddy. though. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> our our cat. His nose is bleeding. Hold on a second. Aww. <laughs> All right. Dry whiskey. Lightning Sounds bolt like round. Death. Okay. We back. In action. <laughs> Lightning bolt round. Do you have any questions? I actually do. Tell me. Are we going to sing them again on this episode? How mm-hmm. lame is it to hold the Quidditch World Cup on a Monday? Super lame. <laughs> Uh, not if you don't have to work lame. the next day. Holla. Party <laughs> all week. All night. On a Tuesday? Holiday. Yeah. It's like having Super Bowl Sunday on a Sunday and nobody gets Monday off. It's stupid. Or like St. Patrick's Day on a Sunday or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Or any holiday during the week. Yeah. Did you see a lot of people this year were trying? They're like, um, Halloween should be on the last Saturday of um, October. No. No, it shouldn't. Just celebrate it. Who cares if it's the actual day? <gasps> I don't know. <laughs> Tiffany. What? <gasps> <laughs> but I don't, well, I will say this. So reading um, the book, and because I'm me, I was looking up when she was like, oh, the date, like the day they go back to Hogwarts <laughs> is like a middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a middle of like. I don't know. It doesn't uh, line up. Like the first, it, September 1st is not the day she says it is in the book. I'm like, you're wrong. <laughs> On other days, like when um, they're talking about like the first, the first, um, um, what is it called? Task. Task. Is it a challenge? Task. 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 Sorry. I wanted to call it tra- the tournament, but I'm like, no, there's something to do with the tournament. <laughs> That's the wrong date. <laughs> Just saying. She's got a lot of her dates wrong in this book. Sorry. Says the Ravenclaw. Well, I did look it up. I'm like, well, I want to know if that's true. Because I want it. Like, you know, when I did with Lupin and the Full Moons. She got that right. She didn't get these dates Yeah, right. that was cool. Cool. All right. Um, what, what are the other questions we have? 
Uh, what would you have given Errol to make him feel better if he had to rest at your house for five days? Pepper up potion. Love. Cuddles. <laughs> I would have given him some pets. Yeah, he could have Some little kisses on his beak. Snacks. Oh, kisses. Snacks. Snacks. <laughs> I would have rubbed his wings. <laughs> a massage. A massage for a small owl. Would have given him um, owl broth. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make him be a cannibal? You're gonna make him eat owls? <laughs> he can't even feel give better by torturing so he, if he eats if he eats others, he gets stronger from their power. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. What's going on? Some children. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> oh god. All right, let's do something else. <laughs> That What's got really dark, like Owl's Caban level. So let's <laughs> let's uh that's sad. Go to the fan story, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm do down. I oh, really don't have any. I questions. will say this. So September first, nineteen ninety four, was a Thursday, and here they were like trying to say it was, I think, a Sunday or something. Yeah, it was a Sunday evening before they were due to Hogwarts. <laughs> well, that's wrong. Sorry. Hogwatch, Hogwatch. Hoggy Watty, Hogwatch. Chichosh, something. Please. Well, no. All right. Fan story. You I recognize like this name. What's that? I recognize this name. Mm hmm. So this week, the fan story comes from Callie Lamb. Hey, so, Callie. Hey, Callie. So she says, hi, I've been meaning to share my Potter story for a while, but I didn't really know what to say at first, as I do not fully remember how I got into the series. I remember seeing most of the movies before I read the books, but speeding through the books once I started them. I've noticed that it's common amongst the other fans to say that they found the first chapter of the first book boring, but I disagree. Maybe it's because I already knew the series was good before I started reading it. I do remember thinking that a chapter called Hagrid's Tale was very boring, but I don't remember which book that was in. I guess we will find out together. I remember watching the first two movies by myself in my bedroom, and by the third one, I swore I would see it in the theaters, and I did, but with three other people who had never seen a Harry Potter movie or read a single Harry Potter book. Naturally, I loved it anyway. Like everyone else, I was completely obsessed and thought about Harry Potter from the moment I woke up until the moment I fell asleep at night. That's my life now. <laughs> uh, Megan Valdez from the group. And I would constantly obsess together, her favorite character, of course, being Ginny Weasley, and mine being the lovely and kind Severus Snake. Jake. Snake. I just said snake. I, I know. Was I was waiting. I was like, wait, should I say it? Should I say it? Because that's how he died. Or no. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. You're making owls eat each other. <laughs> <laughs> Not eat each other. Just eat the broth from their dead carcass. <laughs> that's not any better. <laughs> Tiffany can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna keep going here. Sorry, Kelly. I mean, I'm so <laughs> sorry, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not that funny. <laughs> okay. I'm oh, done. Mine being the lovely and kind Severus Snape, JK. He lovely. was and is my favorite, but for the record, whether I look at him as a good guy or a bad, he is my favorite. He was my favorite before I ever knew he had anything to do with Lily or James. I mean, he's just so much fun to watch on screen. Pour one out for Alan Rickman. Anyways, when I was about 15, a friend of mine invited me to go to with her and her church to a summer youth group when I became a born-again Christian. I still consider it to be one of the most important things that had ever happened to me, but it was not without its downsides. I became a little bit too overly religious and would not allow myself to watch Harry Potter anymore. I remember being sad about it, but thinking I was doing the right thing. I was glad that I had already finished reading the book, so I, at least I got to know how the story ended, but deep down I was sad about not getting to watch the movies anymore. Around this time, the sixth movie, sixth movie, oh my god, I can't say it twice in a row, the sixth movie had come out and Megan had begged me to come with her to see it, but I refused, so she had to go and see it with her father instead. Eventually, as I grew in my, my relationship with God, I felt him telling me that I was being too strict with myself. It was as if God was, very kindly, telling me to lighten up. I'm not trying to preach here, but I do believe that God sees the heart, and there is no harm in loving this series. Soon I rented the sixth movie and watched it and was so happy to be back in the game. 
Megan and I saw Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2 in theaters together, and we continue to geek out together to this day. I was hesitant to tell this story at first due to fear of sounding like a religious nut, but I know that this community is very understanding and kind. I had a weird thought one day. I was thinking that I'd be embarrassed or ashamed if any of the characters in Harry Potter were to somehow find out that I basically left the scene for a while. Then I remembered Ron leaving Harry and Hermione and feeling guilty about it, saying that Dumbledore knew I would want to leave. Harry comforted him, comforted him by saying, no, he knew you would want to come back. And of course, the fan favorite, Hogwarts will always be there to welcome you home. I'm a proud puff. My Patronus is a lynx. Nice. That is cool. And my wand is 11 and a half inches, unicorn hair, and hawthorn wood, the same as Draco Malfoy's. Mm. Nice. I think this makes a lot of sense because the wand wood is described as being given to witches or wizards who struggle with a lot of inner conflict. Mm. We all go through inner conflict, and I know I do a lot. For example, wanting to be a good Christian, but wanting to watch Harry Potter. I think Draco and I have both struggled in different situations and in different ways, mind you, to decide which side of things we want to be on. Not that I'd want to be a Death Eater or anything. Mm -hmm. My conflicts are much smaller than that. However, when I went to the Wizarding World, a wand chose me, and they said it was Holly with Dragon Heartstring. I read the description for Holly, and it also sounds like me, so now I'm just super confused. <laughs> Anyways, one day I was bored, and my, all, my eyes always hurt, so I can't read for very long. So I decided to try and look up some Harry Potter podcasts just to see if there was any, and stumbled upon you ladies. I have never been more grateful for being bored. You are all hilarious. I love you all. And this is an old story because Tiffany, best wishes to with you and your baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if this was long, lots of love. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I love the whole story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like, I know we have a lot of um, Christian listeners and I'm a Christian myself and you can be both <laughs> and mm -hmm. you can do both very well. Yeah. Yes. So, but I like the way that, um, you know, she can compare herself to characters and relate mm -hmm. to the story yes. that way. I always like relating myself to a character, too. So that was pretty cool. Hey, of her. I'm your snake. Snake? Snake. Thank snake. you. Backstab. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I no, like I that she, like, like <sighs> excuse me, I like that she compared herself to Ron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And was comforted as Ron was comforted by yeah. Harry. So, I mean, we hear that a lot with stories. Like, we all find comfort mm -hmm. in these pages, all in different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's you've really cool. left the fandom, feel like you've take left or taken a break, and now you're back and you're listening to us, you're welcome back. Or yeah. even if you, like, not so much took a break, but, like, wasn't in as into, into it. it. Like, mm -hmm. You still liked it? Because that was really, for me, like, for a long time, like, obviously, I've liked yeah. Harry Potter, like, since I started reading it all those years ago. Yeah. But um, now it's like, I need to almost get out. She's it's cons me a it's lot of consumed money. her life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, like, thank you. Yeah, for thank, you. Your thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Utter time for some shameless... <laughs> Plugged. <laughs> Other projects. Other projects. I have something different I want to plug because I can't believe we haven't said this on the podcast yet. I don't mm. think. Mm. But if you haven't listened to our sister podcast, Swish and Fick, you should mm. probably give them a listen. Mm -hmm. They only have, I believe, two episodes out right now. They should be due for a third soon. But yours truly was on the first one. It was oh, a lot wow. of fun to work with those <laughs> girls. <laughs> um, and they're just doing something really cool for our community. It's for... It's, like, it's, strictly for Swishers. Yeah, by that's, Swishers yeah. for Swishers. Nice. So, check them out. If you like fan Facebook. fiction, that's yeah. what it's about. So, it's about fan fiction Thank that <laughs> that either Swishers have written or that, like, we... The community has liked and, like, want to talk more about. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly right now, I believe that it's just stories that other Swishers have written that want to put out... That they want to put out there so that people can hear it. And then Jess and Lacey talk about it with them on the episode. Yeah, it's really cool. So, cool. check yeah. it out. Go download it. Subscribe. Yeah. Like it, favorite it, mm -hmm. share All it. All the good stuff. <laughs> I think they're actually also doing a dramatic reading of Cursed Child in yes. their group right now. Yes, yes I will listen to that. <laughs> Absolutely. I will listen to that. All right. Um, I have a swish and flick shameless plug. Go. So this episode comes out on December 8th, I believe, right? Nope, it doesn't. December it comes 1st. out on December 1st or 2nd, Second. depending <laughs> on if you're a patron or not. Which you should um, be. So. What is today? 20th, 30th. Oh. Um, 
<laughs> so we have just recently put a, a ton of new merchandise on our website. There are happy, no, Mary Swishmas <laughs> merchandise. So it, we've got like some sweatshirts and t-shirts that say Mary Swishmas. We've got notebooks with our logo on it. There's now a new blanket. There's a tumbler for coffee. There's bag. There's all kinds of fun new stuff. There's a purple sweatshirt. Finally! Okay. A Can we purple pause hoodie a and a purple sweatshirt. Because I didn't tell you this, but I want all the things. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Me too. I need swish underpants. Underpants. Oh. I just want it all. Wait. But the most important one. What? The Timmy's Grandma Ornament. Timmy's ornaments. Grandma Ornament. Mm. But really what I was going... like hotcakes, <laughs> y'all. Yeah. <laughs> but really wanted to, what I wanted to tell you guys is that, like, all of our merchandise is printed on demand. So, like, when you order it, it's printed and then shipped to you. So, it's not, like, in a warehouse and has a super fast turnaround. So, if you guys want this stuff before Christmas, like, really the cutoff day to order is around the 11th is Ooh. what the websites are telling me. Like, our our websites um, because we don't really have a way to offer like expedited shipping on our website. So it's just kind of all standard print on demand shipping. So you've got until like December 11th. If you want to order any cool Swish merch for any of your friends or if you want an ornament to hang on your tree with our logo or Timmy's grandma's ornament. Um, so just check it out at swishflickcast.com and all of the merch is on there and it's either I've, I have it all categorized. So there's a clothing section, there's an accessory section, and then there's like phone cases and a featured section. There's also Owl's Command merchandise out as well. You're all welcome for that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when is my Mary Swishmas coming? It shipped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so, yeah. ridiculously excited. I'm me too. Yeah, I just, I'm super stoked. The mug thing, not the mug, the tumbler. Tumbler. Yeah. Where is it? Accessories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With tumbler. With Sorry, our, I'm looking um, at it right now. First of all, I love the size of the mugs. They ain't no small mug, and they have a good big handle. It depends on what size yeah. you yes. get. There's an 11 ounce and a 15 ounce. Well, why would you not get 15? <laughs> <laughs> all the coffee. All of it. And, um, anyway, I, stuff that is, um, I need on it. I need the blanket. It's Sherpa fleece, guys. Yeah. Get real. I like that hat. Yeah. I like and, that. Um, I like that. I like yeah. this. I just want to I just want to <laughs> give a little shout out because so like I get all the notifications anytime anything is ordered. And I just want to say that I'm noticing a lot of last names that I recognize, but first names that I don't. So I wonder if some significant others are buying some of our Swishers Christmas presents. <gasps> I'm just don't saying. It. Don't ruin it. Be things. on the lookout. I'm not. I'm just, I'm not giving anything away. I'm just saying it looks like maybe some Swishers are getting some merch for Christmas. So Huzzah. it's exciting. That would be awesome if that happens to you. Please, <laughs> please let us know. I love that <laughs> ornament. Okay, so when can I have all this? Like now? <laughs> Yesterday? <laughs> Tomorrow? Tiffany, it's coming. Okay, I it's ordered. I need order. it. It's coming. I need it. They are coming. They are coming. Ooh, when I read that first, that made my sub stuff. What? Stomach drop when I read that. Yeah, Scrimmager is dead. The ministry has fallen. Dude. Okay. I just got That's chills. a oh, major spoiler. On. That's a major spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, the guy that plays him in the movie um, was in the Pirates of the Caribbean and Love Actually. Really? Yeah. Mm. He plays um, Davy Jones. Oh. You can hear it in his voice when mm. you see him. Okay. With okay. squiggly beard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Social of media. All right. All right, guys. I have, I have one more plug Wait, and then I'm done. Do you have no Sorry. plugs? What if I have a plug? <laughs> I have one more really quick. So just go and... Uh, Follow Katie and I on YouTube at Main Street Nine and Three Quarters because our next vlog uh, should be live by the time this comes out. So it'll be day one in Scotland. 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 I want to go. You should go. It's beautiful. They really just play bagpipes on the street. They really do. Like I thought that was just a joke, but it was legit. Bagpipes awesome. remind me of funerals. 
Me okay, too, Debbie. actually. I'm just saying, I've, a lot of funerals I've been to, and sadly, I've been to a lot. Yeah. They play bagpipes. Okay, well, here we go. Um, Tiffany, do you have anything to plug? My daughter's cute. Yeah, she really is, though. I'm just trying to survive until Christmas break. Yeah. And I'm not. Yeah. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not something to laugh at. I do apologize. Um, guys, I'm going to Florida, and I can't wait. I'm jealous. So when this officially comes out on the 2nd, a week from then, I'll be in Florida. So I'm probably going to um, Disney and Universal. And she's going to buy me all yeah. the things. I'm just really excited to see um, Hogwarts in like Christmassy stuff. Yeah, like I have a hot butter beer. Sick. Yeah, I'm so excited for hot butter beer. I think I I will like it better than cold. Beer. I already went to shop Disney and I sent her a picture of a spirit um, jersey. jersey. Jersey, I want. It's the yeah. rose gold. So I'm one. excited. I'll be there. I don't know if I'll do a meetup or not because um, I don't know what day I'm going yet. So you should. We'll see what happens. But I will definitely. I'm only there for a couple of days. Um, but I'll, I'm only doing one day at Disney, one day at um, <laughs> uh, Universal. But I'm excited. My sister's coming with me, so I won't have to go to the parks alone. I literally Googled before I knew she was coming, like, how do you do a theme park alone? And they're like, bring a book. I'm like, perfect. I'll read Harry Potter at Hogwarts. Oh, you still should. I might do it. Maybe I'll bring a hardcover so I can get a cute picture of me, like, mm-hmm. in Swish Gear, reading mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. Harry Potter mm-hmm. book. Mm-hmm. Her welcome. Instagram. She give her some buttons before she leaves, so she can dump them all over the park for people to find. I don't litter. <laughs> okay. It's not also um, it's trash. By the time, or so that you guys know, next weekend is our Swishmas party. So I'm mm-hmm. sure that we're going to be going live on the group and everything. So look out for notifications from us next Saturday because that's when we're going to all be together for our second annual Swishmas party. I got you guys really funny gifts, by the way. I'm fine. excited for this party. It's going to be a blast. I might go live yeah. while I'm cooking so you guys can like talk to me while I stir around mac and cheese sauce. Ooh. What's a sauce? Yes. Nothing. What's a sauce with you? <laughs> you should go live on our YouTube page and do cooking with Sarah. We'll see. All right. Let's go because I got to get my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> do you, babe? Oh, that is me. Okay. <laughs> You're green. So we can be found on Facebook at Swish and Flick Podcast and on Twitter and Instagram at Swish Flick Cast. You can also head on over to our YouTube page and subscribe because not only are our podcasts posted there, but some vlogs are as well. So you can follow us on all of our crazy pottery adventures that we do. We don't um, do pottery. Potter yeah. filled. Ah. Uh, so you can also join us on Patreon for exclusive access to the Felix Files, a chance to be a guest on the Felix Files, and lots more. So if that sounds fun, head on over to patreon.com forward slash swishflickcast. Thank you a ton to all of our current patrons. We love you all. You're the best. You rock! Lastly, like I said before, check out our website at swishflickcast.com to get all of the info on us compiled into one place along with all of our merchandise that you want to order before December 11th. Swish yes. swag. And then, Swish swag. In case anybody cares, December 11th is five months till my birthday. <clears throat> You're welcome, America. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That'll be the last time you hear about it because I don't want to turn old. Uh, oh. Not really. I just don't want to acknowledge it. Okay. All right, friends, it's been real. So that concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening, and don't let the muggles get you down. <gasps> Amazing! Just my voice! <laughs>